Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. I just wanted to put a quick video together really, just as a thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Uh, and also, of course, everyone who actually watches the channel and comments on it, that's really appreciated. Uh, so yeah, this one is a bit of a 500 sub special. Uh, all being, I didn't have any chance to uh, do a video last weekend or the weekend before due to being busy. Uh, and it's since gone up to about 533 so uh, I'm really grateful to everyone who's subscribed so uh, genuine thank you for that. Uh, also I would like to uh, just say that I've got another couple of channels that have set up uh, that may be of interest to some of you. Um, uh, you may be aware I've put a cloud surfing video on or a couple of videos uh, on recently and I know of course it's not everyone's cup of tea uh, this is sort of predominantly a rail based channel first of all, uh, however some people do like the aviation stuff as well. Uh, so if you're interested in that I'll put a little bit of a summary now um, showing you a little bit about that channel. But basically it's going to be called uh, UK Wings and More and it's going to cover uh, certain aviation type content and also I've recently done uh, just a cockpit uh, run through kind of tour of a PA-34 multi-engine aircraft just showing all of the uh, the instrument panel for that one. So if you find that interesting, uh, check it out. I've got uh, a link and I will put the uh, details of that video at the end of this one. Uh, and also another one, if you like the scenic inspiration videos that I've done, uh, I very much like getting out in the Peak District uh, and when the restrictions are lifted, I hope to be doing a lot more. So that's going to be a general outdoor peak district, potentially further afield, maybe motorbike camping, that kind of thing, uh, or to Scotland Lake District. So if you're interested in that, uh, I've done a couple of videos that's from pre-recorded material that I've got uh, from a couple of walks. So that's uh, that'd be really great if you could check those out as well. And uh, any support would be much appreciated. Um, anyway, that's uh, enough for the uh, the other videos, but uh, yeah, I'll bring you back. We'll have a look at these. Um, I just wanted to do a bit of a comparison, really, look at the Class 37s. They've all been individually reviewed on the playlist. Uh, I'm going to just put a little bit after this as a bit of a summary um, of some of the different videos that I've done uh, over the first 12 months since starting up the channel. Um, and again, to anyone who's not already aware, and the plan is I'm going to be building a modular double O gauge uh, layout, uh, which is going to be built in different modules, covering different things. So uh, at the moment, I'm doing a uh, river double river bridge crossing uh, and building that module. Uh, and also there's going to be a kind of countryside uh, a preservation railway, a DRS um, TMD and also a city scene as well, uh, or a town centre scene, I should say. Uh, very much with uh, elevations on different levels, with two different track levels, uh, so that we get lots of scenic options, uh, and hoping to kind of scratch build quite a few buildings as well. Um, hopefully, there should be some more progress on that coming fairly soon. At the moment, it has had to just take a bit of a back seat to some of the other things, the flight training, um, and some of the other things. So uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I should be making some more progress with that soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'll uh, leave you with a look at these Class 37s. We'll go into a little bit more detail. And also after that, there'll be a big uh, 500 sub special uh, roundup uh, compilation view of different videos. So that's uh, about enough from me. Uh, if you do like the video, I'd be really grateful as always if you could give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you'd like to be kept fully up to date with any future videos I do, then uh, please subscribe. It is free. And if you press the notification bell, you'll get an email notification whenever I do a new video. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all from me. And I'll uh, leave you with the other videos. So bye for now and take care. Keep well. Bye. Okay, welcome back folks. So first of all, we've got uh, Imperial, which is the uh, coal sector livery class 37. My thoughts were with this one, 
was that we could uh, use this kind of as a an old uh, livery one on the preservation line which has been bought and preserved saved and then uh, refurbished and uh, done up maybe so we could use it for that but also with the option of using it if I uh, change the layout every so often so that we can change it from modern era into that kind of era when these locomotives would have been about so yeah but quite a I certainly wanted to have one of these because it's quite a stunning livery, the uh, the coal sector. In fact, all of the rail freight distribution sector, uh, ones that I remember seeing as a younger lad. So moving on, we've got the uh, the modern direct rail service liveries. And this one in particular, uh, Concrete Bob. As you'll see, it really struck me as being a very uh, grabbing livery there with the uh, the compass logo in the back and the direct rail services livery and the idea is part of the new layout one of the modules i want to be a drs themed tmd traction maintenance depot so or at least part of it because certainly when you're working with uh, double o gauge uh, i've previously had uh, n gauge but with double O gauge, it is a bit more restricted kind of for the size of uh, area you've got to recreate things. But it's not a problem that because even with a very small layout, you can make some brilliant scenes. And certainly with the DRS stuff, I want to uh, I want to make it where we'll have it will represent a much bigger working depot. But I'll just build or model a sort of small area of it at the front so that it, you know it leads the eye to think that behind buildings we've got you know far far more uh, or you know more extensive traction maintenance depot hidden from view so yeah really uh, really like that one concrete bob as we go through these uh, i think all of these locomotives if you have a look on the playlists section i've uh, i've done reviews where i've got the uh, the product review session section so if you want to look at them all in uh, in any more detail, then please feel free to have a look at those. So yeah, as part of that concrete bob, I thought sometimes you see these uh, doing various bits of maintenance work and contract work where they'll be uh, you'll see them together, and I thought you could also use them where you're operating them as a train together. But certainly around the TMD, I thought let's have another class thirty seven. In the DRS livery, and that will complement the Class 57 Chadvara, and also the Class 66, uh, which I've got as well in the DRS livery. So those will be the four staple locomotives for that scene that will also run uh, trains within the modern modern era part of the layout. Now this one, three uh, seven two six one, is one by Kerno model railways down south and that one is uh, a really nice locomotive as well and really i wanted i like the 37s but i wanted to have another one as well that was in a slightly different livery and this really fitted that as well because you've got them too they're both clearly drs but the livery is just different so i thought that looks uh, really good Moving on, hope you like this uh, filming by the way, I've, uh, I've just tried to stabilise it a little bit more if I can, to avoid anyone feeling seasick with moving around too much, but yeah, there's the next one, really nice this one, uh, Inverness TMD, it's one that I believe is actually in operation, or at least it was until recently, if it's, uh, if it's not. Uh, and basically uh, it's one of these great ones like the class 66 six, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, where you've got the uh, a modern operator will have a uh, a locomotive that's actually painted in the uh, traditional British rail colours and this one's obviously a, a Scotland based one uh, but yeah and I think it's been I'm not sure whether I think it's uh, based there 
down in England now maybe so yeah I've got full details of that on the actual uh, review of that particular one but yeah really like the uh, the colour of that one and then of course last but not but least it's time to put your sunglasses on because we move on to Merle Evans this one so it's a colas and you've got a very bright striking orange and yellow livery now, I was going to fit the uh, snow plows on these, but schoolboy error, of course, realised that you need to actually take the uh, the couplings off and kind of nominate a particular side. Uh, and you've also got in those packs as well, all of the brake hoses and everything as well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not really, I, I want to be doing that really when I actually get them where I've got some kind of uh, stable setting for them on the actual layout. So, yeah, just let's have a a bit more of a an overview of those you can see the full locomotives and you can see the Inverness TMD just at the back there you've got that nice Scottish stag detailing back to the DRS from Kerno and then Concrete Bob, good old Concrete Bob there. That rather striking compass livery in the DRS. And then back again to the start. And it's Imperial. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at some of the marvellous Class 37s. What a brilliant locomotive they are. Such a distinctive sound and such a great distinctive look as well so yeah i will uh, bring you back in a bit bye for now Okay, folks, so, uh, yeah, for any uh, aviation fans out there, then uh, welcome to UK Wings and more. So this is going to cover all things aviation, really. So uh, here's some footage of just the uh, fantastically calm waters of the Irish Sea for a change just off the coast, uh, off Liverpool there, uh, basically. Uh, so, yeah, just took some of this footage on a recent flight and uh, really fantastic uh, views as well of the uh, sky and also of uh, some approaches like this one for instance which is an approach uh, in towards Blackpool airfield where we're practicing some uh, ILS procedures uh, or instrument landing procedures and go arounds so yeah uh, if you like your aerial footage uh, other things as well will be covered um, by it as you'll see shortly but uh, we'll just have a look at that uh, there's Blackpool airfield just the uh, outer area of it and then just panning up towards Blackpool and I think we should get the tower making an appearance in a moment just off to the uh, top there's the Blackpool coastline and there you can just see Blackpool tower as well so yeah it'll cover other things as well interesting stuff about the instrumentation uh, about the actual process of, uh, of learning to fly um, and any other interesting things like that. And of course, little snippets like this, uh, which is, if you look carefully, apologies for the shaky footage, uh, it was a bit bumpy at, on occasions, but uh, yeah, you've got a train there actually. Going along the line towards uh, Blackpool, I think this was, um, or possibly towards Liverpool, actually, the main line. Uh, but I thought it was a nice bit of a shot, really, to illustrate some of the uh, ways that the line goes through the uh, actual um, scenery, basically, and through towns and built-up areas, suburban areas. So you can see this line here, it's a good example. Uh, it's going underneath, it's clearly in a cut in there, and there's various bridges, and the more built-up you get, the more bridges you get. Passing another station with one by the looks of it. And then I think shortly here, it ends up where the landscape has dropped down a bit and it transfers onto embankments. So there you can just see it's going over a bridge that goes under it. So yeah, I thought that was pretty, 
pretty interesting footage that I took the opportunity to get as we were transiting from some of our practice areas. And then I think we just pan up here as well, just to have a look at the, uh, the landscape and the weather from a bit of a distance. It will, of course, cover uh, other aviation type footage as well, like this EasyJet flight coming into Liverpool. Uh, for any uh, fans of the uh, commercial aviation. And a very nice smooth touch down there. He's, uh, he's clearly greased it, or she has. Okay, so here's the details of that uh, cockpit tour video of the PA-34. So please have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, there'll also be some uh, onboard footage posted as well, uh, such as cloud surfing videos, that type of thing. Uh, and then the other idea I had was to include some flight simulator uh, footage uh, and actually compare that with some real flights and real flight locations. And then perhaps do a few flights where I explain some of the uh, different things and processes and uh, checks and uh, methods that we use for navigation and uh, and flying the landings and takeoffs etc and to do that I'll be using Flight Simulator 2020 which uses highly realistic uh, mapping and real world traffic and weather as well so uh, please check uh, that out when I do that so here's a landing at uh, Manchester 2 free right runway Okay, folks, so Paul Outdoors and More as a channel uh, is going to cover all things outdoors. It's basically going to be a channel about uh, going out to different locations, uh, doing some filming of uh, some of the fantastic scenery that we get in different places, um, including some kind of sunset footage and things like that. Um, it's also going to probably cover some tours, uh, possibly on a motorbike, um, but looking at different interesting places uh, that I would go out to and film bits of anyway. Uh, so here's one uh, you may be familiar with. Uh, it's a quite high point, uh, Home Moss Mast, uh, and that's on some of the high ground uh, just up from the Snake Pass, basically, uh, where it looks down onto Home Firth and some of that nice countryside around there. And on this particular day, there was some paragliders uh, enjoying the uh, the time up there with the, uh, the height and the favourable winds for them as well. So it cover interesting things like that. Um, and I got the idea for it really from doing the scenic inspiration videos uh, where I went out to different locations and looked at uh, really incorporating some of the landscape that we see out and about and how you can potentially incorporate some of those ideas into the layouts to make realistic looking layouts. So we'll cover things like that. Um, also, I got some of the inspiration for it uh, from some of the um, outdoors bushcraft type videos uh, that I would watch. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy some of that content as well. So that channels also will cover some of the uh, nature and the different wildlife that you see around about uh, the Peak District. Uh, and it's going to focus uh, quite a bit on the Peak District first of all. Uh, and then possibly go a bit further afield to uh, other areas like the Lake District and uh, Scotland and other uh, great locations as well. So uh, here's some uh, pictures of some red deer, I believe, that were shot earlier last year. And of course, some fantastic uh, sunsets that you get looking at the weather as well that we get uh, around here and how great that can look when you, uh, you get the nice uh, sun and the light conditions that that provides. Okay, so the idea is uh, for UK Rails and more. Um, the idea, uh, as soon as we uh, can, I'll be doing some more videos, uh, hopefully doing a few more Peak Forest videos and similar uh, locations, uh, and also a bit more progress on the layout, all being well, uh, and some of those scratch-built buildings. So yeah, after we've uh, just seen a few of these, uh, this is some brilliant footage. You've got some uh, deer up high over the top of the Peak District. 
Um, and after we've watched uh, a little bit of that, uh, I'm going to leave for anyone who's not uh, seen the channel before, uh, just a bit of a summary of where we're up to in terms of the scratch built buildings and then applying those onto the river module. Um, and then the plan is after that, uh, because this video's uh, the length of it's getting a little bit longer uh, than I first expected. But uh, what we'll be doing then is I'll be doing a part two, which will cover uh, a summary, a 500 sub summary of the uh, different running that we've done over the year with some great garden running shots as well. If you do wish to check out the other two channels that I'm going to be uh, starting or I have started, uh, then I've got the first couple of videos on those uh, ready for you to see as well. Uh, so yeah, a couple of them you will have seen already on this channel, um, but certainly there's uh, the first one on Paul Outdoors and more is uh, a Goat Valley Walk, uh, and that's one that I recorded earlier in the year uh, prior to the restrictions, whereby uh, we take a look around the uh, glorious Peak District, uh, particularly around the uh, Goat Valley area. Uh, where you'll see some of the uh, the nice footage of that one. So uh, yeah, please check that one out and see what you think of that one. Uh, as always, any comments you leave are much uh, appreciated. Uh, I'll try to get back to every one of them that I can. Uh, I am aware that occasionally they do get lost uh, in the in the joys of YouTube and uh, the YouTube studio and different methods of uh, notifying your comments. So if I do, um, it's just a purely an error. So uh, I'll always try and get back to you with any other ones. Uh, and if you are interested, of course, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I'll leave you uh, after we've just watched a little bit of these uh, nice bits of the uh, streams in the relaxing Peak District uh, with a little bit more footage uh, from earlier on in the year where I've uh, completed uh, some of the uh, scratch built buildings and actually putting those onto the actual uh, layout so we can see how those look. So yeah, I'll uh, speak to you soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now. show you in a moment uh, how I built these buildings that I'm going to use uh, and then talk about actually building some uh, hard standing as you see here uh, where we're going to incorporate the different buildings into the hillside and sort of show how I look at doing that and my ideas for doing that. Okay guys another quick idea I had was having something along these lines where we actually shorten them uh, to actually come out of the back scene effectively. Uh, so again, you've got basically a bit of a street there that could go under the embankment uh, or it could just come to a dead end. Um, but again, that just gives a, I suppose, a bit of a perspective of how you can fit the, that view into it and then look at that from different angles of the layout. So yeah, just another idea. Okay, speed to you in a bit. Bye for now. And then just as another idea, uh, there was one like this. So you've got the slope coming down from the top up there, with those ones down there, maybe a road that goes underneath and then underneath this embankment as well. So you've got the street down there and then you'd have that one as a building that's on a side road, uh, either the back of the building or the front of a building, uh, up against either retaining wall or embankment at that end and then the high ground going off towards the top over there. So yeah, it just gives a, a different perspective and just helps play around and work out how I'm going to have these things. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that. Bye for now.